What I've uh, done on the slide is add the word crisis. Um, it uh, is a kind of counterpoint to the um, insights of um, courage and commitment that I think John gave us and with his stress on accessibility. But I, I wanted to interject this notion of crisis, partly because we're in the middle of um, the COP uh, fortnight and it's uh, the, the, the climate crisis is so much on our minds and so um, close to the surface of what we're all worried about. And also because I think so many of us around the world have had personal experience of this terrible ap epidemic and what it's done um, to people's health, to people's education, to people's sense of uh, economic or political security. So I, I want to keep that idea of crisis in mind. Um, if we go to the next slide, I'm going to zoom away from the personal, um, which Herbert gave us such a lovely sense of, um, really to the academic. And because I am an academic, and I, I guess this is the way my mind works, I wanted to just set some elements of the scene. And um, I wanted to set these elements of the scene in relation to higher education, which is so familiar, I guess, to so many of us because it's the water in which we swim, it's the language we talk, it's um, the conceptual furniture in our, in our room. But I just wanted to stress three things about the higher, uh, higher education as a place in which this hackathon is going to focus. The first is that we can't think about higher education without thinking about all the other elements of the education system. We are not in ivory towers. So that important element about how the higher education, higher education institutions connect with other institutions, the schooling system, the, um, uh, digi the, the digital uh, atmosphere, that's a tremendously important issue. The second issue I wanted to bring out about the context is that um, the hackathon is probably focusing our minds on short-term solutions, but don't keep your mind only on the short-term solutions. It's very important to also think of the longer-term structural changes that need to happen. And higher education's have that kind of hinge with these uh, big research projects, as well as the kind of uh, annual cycle of students and their, uh, their processes of learning. We both need to think small, immediate, and big and long-term. And the third um, kind of building bridges I wanted to stress about higher education is that we can't think about higher education without thinking about human development more broadly. Higher education sits in a realm of thinking about education and health and housing and equality and peace. And on the next slide is a diagram that I just find very, very powerful. This is the work of um, Kate Raworth. This is uh, Donut Economics, which has been very much talked about. And what she distills so powerfully in this brilliant diagram, I think, is both the fact that we have planetary boundaries. Whatever it is that we want to do is not infinite. It's bounded by the finite resources of the world, the resources of the sea, the resources of the air, the resources of how much fuel we have and how much water, and those are finite. And we're using them too profligately. We're overshooting where we should be. And we've got to draw back on that issue. But where we're undershooting, is on our ceiling of the social foundation of network to each other. Our capacity to connect with each other about decent work, peace and justice, addressing uh, political voice, um, building peace, 
we are not doing enough. So what we have to do is raise the social foundation, expand that floor while cutting back on the way in which we use resources. And we have to live within this donut. And um, Kate Rowett's donut economics have been used by cities in planning what it is, how they should. Uh, the city of Amsterdam is one that's adopted this um, 21st century economics. I want us to think about this in relation to institutions, higher education institutions and higher education as a system, a national system and a global system. So where does this take us in thinking about equity? If we go to the next slide, I'm going to draw on some work I did about 10 years ago when I looked at the history of the word equity in English. And equity has a really interesting um, semantic history. The very first meaning of equity comes in an early English translation of the Bible. And remember, the Bible was not initially circulated in England in English. English, to translate the Bible into English was a very um, seditious act. But the word equity is used to say, I walked with God in equity. So this notion of something, uh, somebody powerless walking with, it, 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 with a powerful force. I have called that notion equity from below. The idea that you can take language and turn it into something participatory. So that's the first meaning of equity in English. The second meaning of equity in English comes into the English language when courts were established that had to um, adjudicate between the uh, needs of the crown and the needs of the church. And equity courts were established over those two powerful interests. And so that form of equity I've referred to as equity from above, equity which tries to frame, to give the policy framework, to um, adjudicate between powerful groups. And the last meaning of equity came into English in the 18th century, and uh, we heard uh, the meaning referred to at the beginning of this session, when equity comes to mean money. So equity is this mobile form of exchange. It moves around. And that's what I'm called equity from the middle. And so the fact is that equity is a very plastic word. It means different things at different times to different people. And the argument I want to make about a higher education and equity is that we need to connect all those three forms of thinking about equity. We need to connect equity from the bottom, equity from the top, and equity from the middle in relation, and I think it, it talks to your notion of building bridges. So how do we do that? If we go to the next slide, this is an attempt by me to map out the diverse sites of higher education, because higher education isn't one thing. It's concerned with access relationships. It's concerned with the fragility and difficulty of widening access to higher education. It, uh, and the very many forms in which discrimination acts. And we heard about discrimination in relation to uh, disability and there are many other dis uh, forms of discrimination around race, ethnicity, gender, uh, class, sexuality, refugee status. Um, we're often presented with the challenges around access, access as though we can trade off. We can either have excellence or we can have equity. And that's a problem. I think we've got to think about both and. Higher education is also has a whole terrain of discussions around participation. We often focus on learning and teaching, but one of the things the COVID pandemic has brought out is how crucial mental health and well-being of students and staff are. Um, to say nothing of physical health and nutrition, in South Africa, very poor students 
can't eat. The universities have to run breakfast clubs in order for students to have enough food to see them through their studies. Um, we are very aware or, and have become over the last 10 years aware of how much gender-based violence there is in higher education. Um, so higher education is not a kind of gentle place of um, civilized exchange although sometimes it is wonderfully that, but it can be very conflictual and people can lose their lives because they are the wrong color or the wrong sex or have the wrong kinds of beliefs. So this kind of how we deal with our curricula under conditions of critical controversy is a huge area in higher education. There are a whole set of issues about how higher education addresses the problem of quality. And that those are both questions of institutional management, they're questions of the conditions of work of all kinds of people in higher education. And then there's the question of higher education outcomes and whether we're going to focus on the, what I call the intrinsic dimension of higher education, what it is to be in that space of higher education, or the instrumental, are we going to privilege what people will do in the future with higher education or what they do now? So the challenge of equity, inclusion, and diversity is a challenge about connecting all these different things. It's a huge challenge. On the next slide, I've just tried to group some of these ideas for you. I think if you are to focus on equity from below, diversity and inclusion are a resource. And what are the issues that equity from below might lead you to think about is some of the problems of new technologies and how they can address issues about affordability, accessibility, adaptability, availability, acceptability. And I guess you could go on expanding that list of A's and then go through the rest of the alphabet. But equity from below is says, Diversity is wonderful. Let's play with it. Let's make it happen. If you're going to focus on equity from above, I think the real challenge is about managing and leadership uh, and uh, how you think about problems of new technologies in a world that wasn't made for equity around new technologies and globalized higher education. We have very limited global, national, and institutional ethical framework works for this. We, um, uh, I think we'll, you'll hear later about the SDGs, but what the SDGs see higher education supporting the other SDGs. The SDGs don't really give us a, an ethical framework for higher education. There's very limited control on transnational tech companies and the forms of national accountability. How do we build that? How do we build ethical companies in, in, in a world where tech companies have grown with very uh, with minimal oversight and some bad consequences of that? And the last issue about the challenge of equity from above is are we going to stress trade-off? Let's we'll do something for this group, but not that group. Or are we going to develop equity from above around um, uh, inclusion and social justice ideals? And then the third challenge, I guess, is how if you're going to do equity from the middle and try to connect equity from above with equity from below. How are you going to make the evaluations? How are you going to undertake the actions that are regenerative and redistributive if you're going to live within that uh, institutional donut shape that I uh, presented to you? So you can see, like an academic, I'm very good at raising lots and lots of questions and um, putting the solution up, you know, pitching the question to you, what solutions can you come up with? 
in the next few slides, I'm just going to show you a couple of solutions that have come from a literature review that I've done. Um, this is a piece of work I did for our Department for Education, which looked at the harmful effects of the COVID pandemic um, on higher education. And um, the different elements on the slide highlight the harms that the, the, the pandemic has done. It's done harms in relation to access, particularly for the most vulnerable students. It's uh, students' experience of poverty has skewed their experience of their degrees. Uh, we know there's been gender-based violence on campuses. Um, there's a debate about quality. Has digital ex uh, uh, learning and teaching expanded access or has it made it unequal because um, of all kinds of um, uh, fractures and, uh, around the digital divides? Has um, the harms associated with the pandemic, people are worried they don't have enough skills to do the jobs that are needed. And has it diminished uh, people's trust in higher education and um, the kinds of um, conversations we have. On the next slide is some of the work we did as part of this review where we looked at how to mitigate these harms. And we looked at um, uh, nearly 20 years of other disasters and crises. We looked at HIV, we've looked at uh, how higher education has dealt with floods, earthquakes and tsunami, the economic crisis and conflict and protracted emergencies. And on the slide after this is just a distillation of um, the evidence of things that have been done to address the harms. I'm not going to read through all of them because I think my time is up, but I want to stress that what in all these evidence are, and these are um, well-founded empirical studies on what helps address the harm, is people join up with each other. People join up and care about each other. Um, they think about the money that is needed to support people with fees. They think about how to help people move from one place to another in their learning. They help think about how to connect a higher education institution with a local setting. So if we go to the final slide, it's just a repeat of the donut. I think what will help us mitigate the harms is working on the donut. It's working on building that social foundation, building higher education to connect all those different forms of equity and um, paying attention to redistribution, regeneration and reimagining uh, re through reconnecting. Thank you very much.